Reverb! 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 Hey guys, it's Fabio from Noise, and today we're gonna be showing you exactly what reverb is, how to use it, and hearing it in a real life space. Most of you have probably already used reverb in your production or your mixing, but how many of us think about what it sounds like outside of our studio? I'm going to some interesting but familiar locations today in London to explain what the effect is like in real life and hopefully that's gonna help you understand how to use it. That was quick. A bit chilly this morning in London. Uh, as you can probably see behind me, my first location is the Tate Modern. They're a little bit weird about filming in here, so let's see what we can get away with. The reason I've chosen the Tate is because of the enormous size and the hard materials of which it's made from, which create all those hundreds of thousands of reflections. Reverb! There are no soft furnishings or soft materials, so rather than the sound dampening, what happens is that they reflect even more. Because of the distance, there's also a bit of a delay before the sound comes back to us. Reverb! This is sometimes why we refer to reverb as echo, and it's because of that bounce that sometimes takes a few milliseconds to get back to our ears. Large reverb is in fact the most noticeable reverb, and the one we remember as kids in parking lots, churches, or even mountain valleys. Nothing to do with reverb, but kind of cool. Okay, let's switch to a smaller and slightly more controlled space where music is often recorded, performed, and rehearsed. My second location is here at Southwark Cathedral in London Bridge. If you've ever been to a wedding or any type of church service before, you'll be familiar with a choir singing or maybe a small orchestra playing in this environment. And it really adds an amazing level of ambience. Now churches weren't initially designed for their acoustics, but it's become a really staple sound in classical music. And even older rock bands such as Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin loved this kind of epic style, hard surface reverb. But for some reason, it still feels quite controlled in a space like a church. Quick interjection, I actually went to Southern Cathedral to check out the venue before Christmas. And when I was there, there was a choir filming. So I had a chance to film a sound in that space because I'm not going to shout reverb in a church, so check it out. Okay, I want to show you an even smaller reverb now that we all know and love. Volare. Oh, oh, oh. E cantare. 
There's a reason why you love singing in the bathroom, even if your voice sounds like a strangled cat, and it's because of the small reflective space. Bathrooms are usually covered in tiles. That's a really hard surface, and as soon as you sing, your voice is amplified, making you feel as if you're singing on a small stage. In the bottom of Abbey Road, they have chambers fully tiled, and they would record reverb in those chambers. So they'd fire the sound down into a speaker and then the microphones would pick it up on the other side. That concludes the final room and the smallest room in which I'm gonna show you reverb in real life. What I wanna do now is take it to some overhead diagrams to simplify it even more. Okay, so in your DAW, you wanna set up three reverbs. Small like the bathroom, medium like the church, and large like the Tate Modern. Options for different styles of space in your DAW could be room for small, chamber for medium, and hall for large. What's important is getting the timing right on each of these small, medium, and large spaces. So you want 0.3 to 1 second for small, 1 to 2 seconds for medium, and 2 to 5 seconds for large. The increase in time will increase the tail of the reverb, which will emulate a larger and larger space the longer it gets. This little X here represents where the sound starts from, i.e. right in front of you. The more reverb you apply, the further and further back it goes into the space that you've created. So if you've got your reverb set up in your DAW, they should sound something like this. I'm gonna play this imaginary snare. I'm gonna play it dry first, then with the small reverb, then the medium, and then the large. Of course, it's up to you to decide how you use these reverbs in your production. Just remember that you're using these different spaces to emulate different distances. So the longer or larger reverb can help make things seem further away, whereas the smaller reverb can make things seem a little bit closer and a little bit tighter. The longer reverbs are gonna take up more space, they are gonna be a little bit more messy, but maybe that's part of your sound. So hopefully this video has given you a little bit more direction on what reverb really is and how to apply it in your production and your mixing rather than just slapping it on with no reason at all. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like what you see, please remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you next week with 